Hello ladies and gentlemen, what's up? Pork Chopper here, and today we're taking a look at all the juicy new information, mostly revolving around the deck system with itemization, attributes, and gems. Let me know what you think of all the changes with gems down below in the comments, I actually do read them. So in this video, I will be covering everything we have learned about today that really opens our eyes about how in-depth, customizable, and flexible decks will really be in version 42 on August the 8th, if you don't know by now already. So first up, and what's going to be most important in this video, is what are gems and attributes and how do they work with each other. Not only can gold be spent on more powerful and awesome cards, but gold can be used to purchase free attributes, agility, vitality and intellect. So what do really attributes do? Each one has 25 levels per attribute. You can put gems in, in attributes at certain levels. For example, you can put one attribute in at level 1 and another at level 7. You can't actually choose where you put these gems in attributes. The levels are locked to what gem you can put in that level. So they're always going to be able to put one level 1, level 7 and level 25. So let's go through each of the three attributes and what the upgrading one gives you. Each time you upgrade agility, you will get extra attack speed and basic armor. Each time you upgrade vitality, you will get health and health regen. And each time you upgrade intellect, you will get mana and mana regen. Each attribute will have different gems, which makes a lot of sense to me. For example, agility will have gems that help with attack speed, while vitality will have ones with help with lifesteal. So you level an attribute up, you know what you're going to be getting, as you will get rewards related to that attribute. Depending on what level you put gems in in the attributes, because there are six, meaning that the higher level it is, the better the gem will be. So if you slot one in at rank 1, it's not going to be as good as the last one being rank 25. If you slot a gem in at the last rank, it's going to be a really good gem. Of course they did this for balancing reasons, they're not going to put the same gems at the same levels. So you can have really good gems at level 1, while at level 25, which is the match for attribute, you can have the worst ones, which you know wouldn't make sense. Gems are basically items, especially at higher ranks, which I just said. These will have general benefits for you or against allies, which can make some very interesting and unique experiences. So how it will work in the new system is that cards will cost attribute points. Attribute points cost a thousand gold, which is the new currency. You spend them, but they will be returned if you discard the card. Say for example, a card costs 5 vitality and 3 agility. You will have to have to spend 7,000 gold to make sure you have that for vitality and 3 agility to acquire the card. However, if you discard the card, you will get all those attribute points back to spend on another card. So overall, pretty much increasing the strength of your attributes unlocks powerful gems that further increase your ability to defeat your opponent. You'll be able to slot 6 gems to complement your card selections. Now you'll be able to upgrade your build, specifically attributes and gems while in combat. However, you'll still need to buy cards back at base. We also learnt more about decks and the new cast system, so how will it work? You will pick two different abilities, then can select from 3 to 12 cards to complete a deck. You can only have three equipped at once in a game. This makes it so instead of six slots for cards with mere abilities or effects, now with each card having a unique effect, which is now there is over 100 new ones in the game, they can make more crazy effects. For example, one they detailed was where you can status gem your team and the enemy team which are near you. This sounds silly and crazy, but with only three slots and being expensive, it means it can be balanced more easily. So after you pick your 6 gems into the 3 attributes, this means 6 gems in total, and you can spread them out on either attribute you want. For example, you can have 2 in agility and 4 in vitality, so there's no limits here. Generally, the whole new card rework is to free everything up to make you do what the hell you want in the card system. Also, another point is that deck slots will stay the same. So if you have 40 deck slots now, you will have 40 after the update, and they will still cross strip all coins to purchase after the update still. So if you have plenty of decks now, you're going to have plenty afterwards. Something they also went over which I didn't expect to be such a thing is the uniqueness of affinities. They've talked about this a bit but they really detailed how much depth they are really going in here. Each one has some sort of speciality. Here are three I picked up on which sound really cool. So first knowledge will have consumables, 
Death will have cursed cards. This means they will be locked in place forever. An example they gave here is that you could have really strong early to mid game cards, but late game they're not that great. So they have their pros and cons, meaning hey, you can get this card early on, it's going to be amazing for you, but you can't get rid of the card. So that means it's a sacrifice for late game to be more dominant in early game, so hopefully you can win the game in that period of time. Order will have Elevate cards. This increases the power of that card if it's the only card in play for your deck, so you only have that card and not two other cards. This sounds really interesting, but the possibilities really seem endless here, and it's the first time, uh, even though with all the leaks, that we can truly understand what this system will be, and how much freedom we're going to have to play with attributes, to play with gems, and to easily be able to unlock it all. Each card is going to be so directly affecting your play style. You can't just pick cards because you pick cards. You really have to think of this card and think this is how I'm going to play this game. And if I choose this card wrong, it's going to affect me drastically. So that's something to really note there. And finally they went on to talk about the UI of the new system, which would be so much more clearer. For example, how many attribute points you have and you can spend, is a card available to buy or not, and even made it so if you discard a card, like I said, you can bring it back and pick it up later. They also plan to add more cards in after they have smoothed out the launch of version 42. They have many plans for extra cards, so don't worry, this deck system will keep getting more in depth in depth, even though it's significantly more in depth and more fun, it sounds like already, than the system we currently have. Now for all players like myself, the transition is going to be hard, no doubt about it. We've been a whole new game pretty much, I cannot wait for it. And again, let me know what you think of the changes I stated in this video, what are you excited about most? It, it's really hard to get your head wrapped around it, but I cannot wait to find out on August the 8th. Anyway guys, thank you for checking out this video, and do check out more of my channel, plenty of Paragon content here, and to come with the new update, and sorry if it's a bit echoey or the sound's not as crisp, I'm not in my usual recording setup, and thank you all for watching this video, and I'll see you all next time.